It's time because we're about to dive into the riveting story of Hasso von Manteuffel, a man whose life unfolded against the tumultuous backdrop of World War I, World War II, and the complex political landscape that followed. But here's the kicker. As we explore the highs and lows of Manteuffel's journey, it's essential to acknowledge the shadows that lingered behind this military figure. Despite his wartime heroics and strategic brilliance, there's a darker side to Manteuffel's story that demands our attention. So, grab a seat as we untangle the intricacies of a man whose legacy is both impressive and, at times, marred by controversy. So, picture this. It's World War I, and Manteuffel is rocking the Western Front, earning himself not just one, but two Iron Crosses. That's the kind of guy he was, a real war hero. After the chaos of World War I, Manteuffel sticks around in the Reichswehr, Germany's post-war army, but there's a little snag. Thanks to the Versailles Treaty, they were limited to just a hundred thousand men. Talk about restrictions! But wait, enter Adolf Hitler onto the stage, and suddenly things start getting interesting. Hitler decides Manteuffel is the man for the job and puts him in charge of a motorized infantry battalion. Now, instead of just fighting on the front lines, he's teaching the new recruits about armored weaponry. Imagine Montefel as your drill sergeant, showing you the ropes for tanks and all things motorized. Fast forward to Operation Barbarossa, Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union. Montefel gets the command of a mechanized infantry battalion and seven. Panzer Division is on the move. Battles for Smolensk and Verazma become the backdrop of his heroic deeds, and for his outstanding performance, he gets a promotion to colonel. But it doesn't stop there. The drive to Moscow resumes, and Mountufel's regiment snags a key bridge on the Moscow-Volga Canal. Result? The guy gets a knight's cross. It's like military bling. Winter arrives, and so does the offensive on Moscow. Mantufel manages to push forward another 50 kilometers before having to retreat. The man knows how to maneuver on the battlefield. The winter offensive may force a retreat, but Panzer Division still holds its ground, preventing a Soviet breakthrough. Now, Montefel isn't just about the Eastern Front. In 1942, he's shipped off to Tunisia, in North Africa. Surprise! And guess what? He's a hit there too, commanding a motorized infantry division like a boss. Unfortunately, he misses out on the German Africa Corps surrender because he falls ill. But hey, the guy's a trooper, no pun intended, and he heads back to Germany to recover for his next big role in the war. Back on the Eastern Front, Mantofel is a commander to be reckoned with. In Zhidomir, Ukraine, he pulls off some impressive moves, inflicting severe losses on the Soviets. A round of applause for strategic brilliance. September 1, 1944 marks a significant shift. Mantofel, now a General der Panzer, moves to the Western Front, taking command of the Five Panzer Army. The Ardennes Offensive unfolds, with Montofel forming the left flank next to the Six SS Panzer Arme. They barely reach their goal, and despite putting up a fierce fight, they're ultimately pushed back. But don't count Montofel out just yet. He's not one to stay down for long. Post Ardennes, he's back on the Eastern Front under the command of General Oberst Heinrichsee. There's a twist. Heinrichsi thinks trying to halt the Soviet drive on Berlin is futile and refuses orders from the Army High Command. Enter Montufel, asked to take command of the Army Group, but he declines. Instead, he orders a massive retreat towards the Elbe River to avoid falling into Soviet hands. Surrendering 300,000 men to the British is not an easy decision, but it's the one Montufel makes. The war ends. And in 1948, Mantufel is released from prison. But wait, the story doesn't stop there. He steps into German politics, becoming a member of the Bundestag from 1953 to 1957, representing the FDP. Now that's a switch from the battlefield to the political arena. In a sudden twist, in 1959, Mantufel faces a war crime charge for having a deserter shot in 1944. Despite not violating any laws of war, he gets a two-year prison sentence. Fortunately, with some help from the president, he's out after just four months. Talk about the roller coaster of post-war life. After his release, Montufel wasn't just sitting around. Nope, he's actively involved in German politics, advising on Bundeswehr redevelopment in the early 1950s. 
The man's got a keen mind for strategy, whether it's on the battlefield or in the political arena. Now, let's fast forward a bit. The guy who once commanded panzer divisions and faced off against the Soviet Union finds himself interned at the British-administered Island Farm Special Camp 11. In 1946, he switches hands and joins the Americans, contributing to the U.S. Army Historical Division Project. His focus was mobile warfare in the Ardennes Offensive. He's released in December 1946 and jumps right back into politics, representing the FDP in the Bundestag. In the late 50s, Mantoffel takes a detour and joins the German party. Politics seems to be his second calling after the military. He's even involved in advising on the Bundeswehr redevelopment. But there's a bump in the road in 1959, that war crime charge we talked about earlier. Despite some controversy around his actions, Montufel serves his time and gets back on his feet. Imagine this. It's 1968, and Montofel is at the United States Military Academy at West Point, lecturing in eloquent English on combat in deep snow conditions. Who would have thought, right? He even works as a technical advisor on war films, bringing his wealth of experience to the big screen. In 1973, he makes an appearance in The World at War, episode 19, talking about the pincers. The man's story is like a history lesson in itself. Now, let's delve into the post-war reflections of Hasso Mantoffel, a man who not only experienced the horrors of war, but also had the opportunity to interact closely with Adolf Hitler. In the aftermath of World War II, Mantoffel shared some intriguing insights into the Red Army's tactics and the undeniable impact of Adolf Hitler's charismatic personality. His observations shed light on the unique challenges faced by Westerners when confronted with the methods employed by the Soviet forces. Montofel was candid about his impressions of the Red Army. He expressed a deep admiration for the standard maintained by the Soviet forces during the Second World War. The imagery he painted was vivid. The relentless advance of a Russian army spearheaded by tanks, followed by a vast horde of soldiers, many of whom were mounted on horses. These troops carried with them only the bare essentials, sustaining themselves on meager rations gathered from the fields and villages along their march. The primitive logistics of the Russian forces made them exceptionally resilient, capable of pressing on for weeks without traditional supply lines. Mantefel emphasized the difficulty in countering such an unconventional army as cutting their communications was often futile due to the absence of recognizable supply columns. In his post-war reflections, Montoufel provided valuable insights into the unique challenges posed by the Red Army's approach to warfare, challenging Western preconceptions of military strategy. Moving on to his experiences with Adolf Hitler, Montoufel offered a nuanced perspective on the dictator's personality and leadership style. Hitler, he noted, possessed a magnetic and hypnotic charisma that could sway even those who initially opposed his views. Individuals intending to present their perspectives often found themselves gradually succumbing to Hitler's influence, sometimes ending up supporting positions opposite to their original intent. Montufel, however, described a different dynamic in his interactions with Hitler. Having become acquainted with the dictator in the final stages of the war, Montufel claimed to have learned how to keep Hitler focused and maintain his own arguments. Unlike many who feared Hitler, Montufel appeared unfazed and recounted being called to the dictator's headquarters for consultations. This familiarity stemmed from an invitation he received following a successful military operation at Zitomer, an event that had captured Hitler's attention. And with that, we wrap up today's exploration of Hasso von Montofel's extraordinary journey through the pages of history. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the life of a military luminary, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more captivating stories. We'd love to hear your thoughts and suggestions for future videos, so drop them in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and we'll catch you in the next installment. Thanks for watching.